Do you want me to talk to you about my mental health? Then mind how you respond. Do not say, pull yourself together. First of all, if I was not trying, you would probably have no chance to speak to me now. Secondly, it is easy to say, but unless you have a manual for it happening, then you are offering an empty bottle to a thirsty person. This phrase makes me feel worse, as it underlines the fact that I am in pieces, that my life is distorted and puzzles do not fit in. Hence, what is the point of trying and continuing to fail? Do not say, count your blessings. It makes me feel so guilty. It makes me want to withdraw even more into my void because I don't want to feel guilty. Believe me, I do not want to feel the way I'm feeling. I have not chosen my illness. I am aware of all good things in my life and they subconsciously keep me alive. By asking me to count them, you put some salt into my wounds. It makes me feel guilty towards all the good in my life. It provokes me to think about the blessings and instantly say, yeah, but I have wonderful children, but what kind of mother I am constantly crying my eyes out. They do not deserve this. Yes, I have a job, but what is the point when each morning I cry my eyes out as I'm unable to get up and face it? Do not say others have it even worse. I do appreciate that. And I am fully aware that there are many people whose circumstances might be even worse than mine. But in the moment of mental health distress, let's face it, I do not care. My pain in that moment of time is all I can feel. I have no capacity for analyzing any other aspect than my own reality. It is the illness in full control. Would you say that phrase to someone battling the cancer? You have so wonderful children, you need to leave for them. Don't say that either. Well, I know that and I do not need to be reminded. Hearing that statement makes me feel guilty that I am at this point in time unwell and unable to live fully for my children. However, the fact that I am still alive, believe me, I am doing it for them. What could you then say instead? Well, ask what could you do to help or ask do you want me to? It is that simple. Just ask what you can do to help. Very often person you are speaking to may be in at that point when they are unable to state what exactly might help them. That is why sometimes you need to use direct specific question. Do you want me to? Do you want me to call your GP? Do you want me to call someone? Do you want me to sit with you? It's that simple. Listen and paraphrase to show that you are listening. Paraphrasing is saying it back in your own words. It's not only a powerful tool to ensure effective communication, but it is a channel through which you can express your understanding and your empathy. When you are provided with some trust and the person opens up to you about their suffering, you are not asked to provide any solution. You are not asked to fix it. You are just asked to listen. Showing that you listen happens through paraphrasing. So what you can say is, I can hear you. I can hear you are suffering. I can hear you are feeling unwell. What else you can do? What else you can say? just be. This is probably the most important one. Not only for anybody in a mental distress, but for every human. Very often, when in the captivity of mental health distress, the person in question does not want to talk. So, just be. Very often we need just that. Somebody's presence. Somebody's proximity. To know we can lean on if we want or need to. Presented artwork 
is a part of my book titled Mental Health in Pictures. There are over 30 pieces of art and narratives on the topic of mental health and my own personal journey through recovery. It is available on Amazon.